Hey Bass Resource, James Niggemeyer here. I want to share a technique with you that over the years I've, I've really grown to be very fond of. It's got a special spot in my Ranger boat and that's the swim jig presentation. It's a technique that'll work anywhere in the country, 12 months of the year, as well as for all species of bass, whether it's largemouth, smallmouth, or spotted bass. I've had so much enjoyment out of it, uh, not only for fun, but it's also put some incredible fish in my live well and actually earned me some money at different stops on tour. So with that, let's get into this swim jig. I've got some great footage of me on the water fishing a swim jig. Here we go. I do like to jerk it and, and just give it, just impart some action so that thing's fluttering in the water and it's kind of, looks like it's trying to get away from something that might be pursuing it. But it's a, it's a great way to cover water and really has done, has, has been a tremendous bait for me um, in, in different tournaments over the years from say January to right through, you know, right through the fall. Sometimes those fish want you to work it a certain way. And so keep an open mind. Sometimes a straight retrieve, a slow roll is good, and then other times high in the water column like today on this low light situation, or on, this, on these low light conditions, a higher in the water column can be really good. On those brighter days with clear water, slow rolling it is a, maybe a little more in order. But so definitely play with your retrieves and let the fish kind of show you what they like. One of the things that makes it really good is it it's it's super subtle so the fish don't hear it or see it till it's right up there near them and sometimes that can really draw a reaction strike from them because it's it's something where they just have to either put up or shut up they either need to strike it or let it go by and it makes them it kind of pulls that reaction strike out of those fish which is i think critical in 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 some events where fish aren't actively feeding. But I'm talking about swim jigs as they pertain to shallow water, drawing reaction strikes, places where you'd throw a, a spinner bait. One of the things that's, this is a, a great go-to when a fish, it, when, when the fish have kind of shied away from the flash and the uh, brightness and the overall loudness of a spinner bait, they will eat, still eat a swim jig which makes it such a productive way to uh, catch fish year round. The, the colors that I use, I use basically three different colors. I use a green pumpkin, a white or shad pattern, and then a black and blue. Those are the real three colors that I fish with. I don't try to get too, uh, I don't try to get too fancy with it. Every once in a while, I'll hand tie something that's just a, basically a variation of one of those. There's one. Yes, look at that good one right there too. And he just ate it just like, like you would on a spinner bait. Got it right in the corner of the mouth and uh, just a great technique, way to catch them. If you've not tried sw swim jigging, this is uh, something I, you ought to try. I've kind of twisted up my line because I've been throwing it around a bunch, covering a lot of water. Put her back. All right. But that's quarter ounce. The sizes I generally fish are quarter and three eighth. And every once in a while, I'll throw a half and catch them on that. If I want it to, if I want it to get, you know, if I want to be able to move the the swim jig faster, then that half ounce enables me to do that and draw a reaction strike from fish generally in clearer water but for me i've had the most success again with that menace grub the rage craw and then the little swimming caffeine shad trailer
So what I've seen is that I'm probably getting 65% to 70% of my strikes. So I'm going to go ahead and take this striking menace grub off and I'm going to try, even though it's been working really well, I'm going to try the rage craw just to slow it down. The double tails of the rage craw could slow this jig down and maybe, maybe I'm going just a little too fast because this is a more streamlined trailer. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and put this rage craw on the back of this striking KVD heavy cover swim jig. Again, I've this is kind of a custom color that I just I just put some purple and blue flake in the in the back there and I'm gonna put this striking rage craw and I pulled the first segment off of there to kind of shorten it but with these appendages I believe we're gonna get more drag and it's gonna slow that bait down some even if I reel it the same pace it's gonna slow it down some so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of measure where I think it's gonna come out so right about there and I want to rig this thing as straight as possible my hands are wet straight as possible so that it swims straight and the, the swim jig doesn't roll over on its side it's one thing about swim jigs don't want that bait to roll over on its side and there we go we got it ready to go Yeah, it definitely slows it down. It's that double tail design of that rage craw that slows the bait down. Even if I'm still reeling at the same speed, it's gonna kind of slow it down a little bit more. And kind of, when I kill it a little bit, <clears throat> because, there's le because there's more drag, it's not gonna just come through the water as fast. So when I kill it, it's actually gonna kind of stall it out. And, uh, and keep it high in the water column. So that's a really cool deal about, you know, just thinking about, and, even, and, and if I wanted something to go even faster than the striking uh, swimming caffeine shad is a better way to go. That little boot style trailer almost has no drag, just that little tail on the back there. So we're just gonna see if maybe this is what they want. One thing about the Rage Craw is, <clears throat> It definitely presents a, a, a bigger profile in, on the bait, larger all the way around. So we'll see if that's, we'll see if they like that. Skips really well too. That's a, that's a big plus with this bait, being able to skip it. Okay, and the Rage Craw strikes. I'm not sure if it really made that. See, that's more of a pre-spawn fish. I'm not sure if it's making that big of a difference, but just an example how that Rage Craw can get some, some fish too. And how different trailers will really work well in certain situations and they do a little different thing so you got to experiment with them i really like a medium heavy rod this is a seven foot three and a half this is actually a lose mark rose it's out of his ledge series but i like this this length particularly because it's long enough that i can really throw it way out there but it's also just short enough where I can make real precise presentations to cover that I might come across while I'm fishing throughout the day. I like it with a seven five to one gear ratio reel. And I like that faster gear ratio reel because sometimes they'll, they'll eat that swim jig and come right to you. So you need to pick up that slack and then be able to set the hook. I like braided line, 30 pound test braided line. I'm using the Strike King Tour Grade braided line and then I'm, I'm actually putting on a leader. A lot of times I like a leader. I'm using about a six to eight foot leader of 16 to 20 pound test gamma fluorocarbon. Why I do that is because I love the, the fact that I have no stretch in the braid, 
but I also have the invisibility of fluorocarbon. I noticed that a lot of times when I'm fishing the swim jig, my braid's not in the water. It's, you know, I'm fishing it in shallower water, particularly, and I feel like that braid being opaque sometimes can uh, maybe turn a fish off where that translucency of the fluorocarbon uh, can be a little bit more stealthy and actually sneak up on a fish and trick them a little bit more. If I'm fishing around a lot of cover, I go straight braid, but I, I really like the 30 pound test for the swim jig. I feel like for a lot of instances, uh, you're not really uh, doing like a flipping style presentation. It's more of a casting. So using the 50 and 65 pound test, you can do it. I don't think it's necessary. The 30 has uh, pulled some really big fish to the boat for me. I also want to show you guys my swim jig box because I really believe in keeping things simple. This is my swim jig, my actual swim jig box that uh, I carry on tour that goes in my Ranger. I believe it's what you would call a 3600 size box. It might look smaller, but it's not. Um, basically, I've got it separated into quarter, three eighths and half. And then just the colors that I talked about earlier, your whites or shad patterns and your, your green pumpkins and then your bluegill patterns and then the black and blues. I'm keeping things simple and in that I find that um, I'm having more confidence when the one with the bait that I have tied on and I fish it well. So that's my swim jig overview. Thank you guys for tuning back into my YouTube channel. I hope that if you weren't familiar with the swim jig that you'll give it a chance. It's a tremendous fish producer, catches some really big ones. Um, and the thing that I think that's really cool about it is it enables me to cover lots of water and sift through areas that don't have a lot of fish to where I can find those areas where those fish are located. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like the content that I'm putting out, please hit the like button, drop a comment. Love to hear from you. Until next time, good fishing.